uh, let's start with the first hands-on exercise that is concerned with a new feature called uh, IOS Output State Retention in Standby. Uh, let's give some uh, background at first. In the standby mode, by default, the IOS are in a floating state, which means high impedance, and uh, thus they are not being driven to any defined logical level. Due to this, uh, some customers in the past were forced to use the stop mode, where the content of all registers is preserved, and thus also the GPIO configuration. Even when the standby mode uh, was uh, fulfilling all the requirements uh, concerning the uh, low power consumption and the wake-up time. So with the standby mode, of course, you can reach even lower power consumption than with the stop mode. So the fact that uh, by default the IOs uh, in the standby mode are in the high impedance state might be an issue for control signals for external devices, such as uh, slave select or chip select for some uh, SPI uh, slave uh, devices or uh, for uh, some uh, low power control signals. Because, of course, we need to ensure that the proper voltage level is maintained even when the MCU is in a deep low power mode such as standby. So that, uh, for example, an SPI slave uh, doesn't get activated by accident. So now how to solve this situation? If we enable this uh, new feature, the IOS output state retention in standby, then when entering the standby mode, the IOS state is automatically sampled and the corresponding voltage level is applied through a pull up or a pull down resistor. So when we uh, all we need to do is just to set one bit and then this all is done automatically. If we have an output set to high, it will be sampled and afterwards a pull up resistor will be connected to maintain the same voltage level. As some of you may know, we had a similar feature already on, uh, for instance, STMC2 L4 microcontrollers. But uh, in th that case, it was done manually for all the pins, which means uh, we had to manually set either a pull up or pull down resistor for, for instance, uh, the pin uh, PA14. I don't know. Here we just need to set one bit and that's all. It's done automatically afterwards. Quite important to note is that the pull up and pull down resistors, they remain connected and maintain the voltage level until this feature, the IO state retention, is disabled by software. So as you may know, after wake up from the standby mode, uh, there is a reset. And uh, the pull up and pull down resistors remain connected the whole time until we disable it by software which is to be done, of course, when we finish the configuration and the peripherals uh, initialization and they are again ready to drive the signals. I can uh, illustrate it here on a picture. So uh, this case, uh, the first uh, half, is the uh, case when the IO state retention is disabled. So you can see that we are in a run mode and the GPIO mode is uh, normal, which means uh, whatever we have previously configured. Then upon the execution of, uh, for example, WFI instruction, wait for interrupt, we enter the reconfigured low power mode, which is in our case standby, and you see that the GPIO mode has changed to floating, and the IOs are not driven. And then after wake up, we wake up to the run mode again, and the state we can, again, there is a reset after standby, just to remind, and we can configure again uh, whatever is uh, needed for the application. But the problematic is this, uh, this uh, period where the pins are not driven and the state is not defined. If we enable this feature, then this is done here, still in the run mode. Yeah, and then when we enter standby, the GPIO mode changes from normal to, uh, let me say, a state retained. This means either pull up or pull down resistor connected. And then after wake up, this is still applied until we disable it by software in the run mode. So you can imagine that in this uh, part, we perform the configuration and initialization after a set. And then when it's finished, we clear the bit and the pull up and pull down resistors are disconnected. And we are again driving the signals uh, using the peripherals or GPIOs configured as outputs. So that's all from the theoretical part. And now let's move to the hands-on exercise itself. So in this lab, we will use the Nucleo H563ZI development board, which is one of the development boards available for this uh, H5 family. We will observe the difference in behavior with and without uh, IO standard retention enabled in standby. 
and uh, we will make use of the stm 2 cube software ecosystem. In particular, we will use the stm 2 cube IDE and the built-in uh, stm 2 cube MX version. So first, we will configure the MCU pinout and peripherals in the cube MX. Then we will generate the project and we will add some uh, application code and then we will verify the correct functionality. So let's get started. I will switch now to the cube IDE and I will start a new STM32 project. And uh, it will open the MCU selector where I will select uh, our microcontroller. Yeah, of course, we have a very, to some extent, sem similar family, stm 2 u 5 which is also a new family, which is a low power microcontroller, but it can run, I think, up to 160 or 70 megahertz. Uh, it is similar to H5, but H5 is uh, in the high performance part of the portfolio. So it's not uh, really a low power microcontroller, but uh, uh, of course, every microcontroller family features the low power modes. So then it always depends on the requirements, uh, how low the power consumption has to be. Okay, so I will start from the MCU MPU selector. As you can see, we can start also from the board selector in which case uh, some pins uh, would be already pre-configured for us based on the external components on the development board. But I will start from an empty device and I will put here H563ZI and I will select the part here that is used on the nuclear board. This helps me to select the right part. I click on next. Now I have to select uh, project name. So, for example, STM to H5 IO retention. And by the way, this is the point where I have to decide whether I will use the trust zone or not. Because, uh, as you may know, the H5 family is based on the ARM Cortex M33 core with the trust zone technology. But uh, we have here a relatively simple example. And to keep things simple, we will start the project without the trust zone. So, we will have just one project uh, and not separated uh, secure and non secure parts. So I'm now uh, starting the project. Now I get a warning about the iCache uh, that uh, we should enable iCache to reach the maximum performance. This is not uh, anyhow uh, essential for this hands-on. It's just warning because uh, iCache is something that has been introduced on uh, STM32 microcontrollers not so long ago. And it really helps greatly to increase the performance since the number of um, accesses to the slow uh, flash memory is reduced thanks to this iCache. And uh, some customers uh, forgot to, to activate it and then we get some support requests that the performance is not as it should be, as expected. So we decided to use this warning in the QPMX. So I will do it. But uh, let me emphasize once again that this is not anyhow essential for our hands-on. It's just to get rid of this uh, warning uh, next time we generate the code. Okay, in the next step, I will use the uh, USART 3. And this is the one that is uh, connected to the virtual COM port and I will use the serial port for some uh, traces. So I will activate it in the asynchronous mode. And uh, I know that uh, on the nuclear board, uh, the right pins to use are PD8 and PD9. So now I have to remap those uh, UART3 signals to the right pins. So I can press Control and left click. And I can see uh, the alternatives that I have. And using drag and drop, I can simply remap the pins here in the pinout and configuration tab. So I will do it for both signals. Now I need to configure PB0 as output. Uh, this is the pin that is connected to the green LED. So if I can't find it, I can use here the help of this. I can just put here PB0 and it will start flashing. I know it's the pin uh, 46 now. So I will configure it as output. And then we have a user button connected to pin PC13. Now this is the one here, pin 7, and I will configure it as input. And for the USART 3, I forgot to mention that we can leave the default settings, which means the baud rate will be 115,200 bits, 8 bits, uh, no parity and one stop bit. Okay, and that's uh, all from the pinout and configuration. 
So now I can either press Control S to save the project and uh, thus also generate the code or there is a dedicated button, device configuration tool, code generation. So I will click on it. And you can see that the code is uh, being generated. Okay, now it's done and I'm in the main.c file. And if I scroll down a little bit, you can see here that we have here some initialization functions that were generated uh, according to our configuration in the QPMX. So we have configured some GPIOs, uh, we have enabled iCache, and we have configured USART 3. So that is correct. And now I will add some code. And for that, I will use the cheat sheet that we prepared for the purpose of this workshop. So I will switch here to the GPIO retention hands-on. And I will start by including the standard uh, input output library. And we have here the defined user code sections. Uh, user code sections are uh, recommended to use because uh, if we regenerated the project, for example, we add an additional peripheral in the QPMX and we click on generate the code, the code inside these sections will be kept. So this is uh, quite important. So I will include the standard input output library because I want to use a printf for debugging. Then in the private define, I will include my define to either enable or disable the IO retention feature. Then in the private function prototypes, this is just the printf uh, redirection to, to UART. And then on the next page, I have my uh, application code in the user code section two. It is uh, relatively simple. So as you can see, in the first step, we will use it uh, without the IO retention enabled. So let me say in the legacy mode. And uh, at the beginning, we set the green LED. We will read uh, the bit if, because this might be happening after wake up from standby. So we will check if this was enabled. And if so, we will disable the IO retention and then in both cases, we will wait in the main loop. We will be toggling with the green LED and waiting for user button press. And once the button is pressed, we will turn on the LED. This means it should be on and we will enter the standby mode. And we will see the difference in the behavior. And there are, of course, some delays to make it uh, easily visible so that it's not uh, happening too fast. So I can now build the project. Hello. So the project is now built and I will flash it. I don't uh, have to enter the debug session this time. And you can see that the green LED is uh, toggling. Okay, so we are here. We are here in this loop. Okay. And we wait for a user button press. And if I press the button, The LED uh, goes off, even though we set it here too high, which means it should be on. But once we enter the standby mode, it goes off because the corresponding pin PB0 is in the high impedance state and it's not, it's not driven. Basically, we lost the state of the IO. Now, if I press reset, and of course, uh, in the typical application use case, we would wake up uh, on RTC or, or user button press or from some external signal. But here, to keep it simple, we don't have any wake up source for the standby. So I have to press the black reset button to wake up again. And I'm again in the main loop, toggling, waiting for user button press. If I press it, it goes off. I will also configure the virtual com port. So I can here choose the right, right comport and this configuration. Okay, I can and you see the the traces corresponding to the behavior. So when I press the user button, sorry, I didn't press. I enter the standby mode, use reset button to wake up. And again, OK, and now I will here define the IO retention enable. I will rebuild the project.
you can see that this part of the code is now active. So just before entering the standby mode, we will enable standby IO retention by calling this uh, HAL uh, API. I flash. Flash the, the project. You can see that this LED is uh, toggling. Now it's done. So I can uh, open the console. And now when I press on the user button, I enter the standby mode. Before that, I enable the IO retention and you see that the LED is on. Because it's a uh, voltage uh, level is uh, maintained thanks to this feature. I press reset. I'm again waiting in the main loop. And press the user button. And you see that the LED doesn't go off. So the IO output state is kept. And even if I press and hold the reset button, I keep the device under reset. You can see that it's the same. Because it's kept until it is uh, disabled by software here. That's all from the hands-on. So let me just quickly summarize what we have learned. Uh, how to use the IO state retention in the standby mode and what it can be used for. We also learned uh, how to use the stm 2 cube software ecosystem, in particular the stm 2 cube IDE with its uh, built-in stm 2 cube MX version. And we uh, became familiar with the Nucleo H563ZI development board.